Okay, hi there. Welcome to our latest 2021 revision update. We're going to take a look this time at indirect taxes. Now, indirect taxes represent one way in which a government can intervene in a market to change the pattern of and the level of demand and ultimately change the allocation of scarce resources in markets. So in this first video, we're just going to take a look at what indirect taxes are and some examples, give you a feel for the shape of indirect taxes in the UK. What are indirect taxes? They're essentially taxes on spending, taxes imposed by the government on suppliers that increase the supply costs of producers. And uh, we'll have a look at this in the next video when we go through the diagrams, but the amount of a tax, the level of an indirect tax is always shown by the vertical distance between the pre-supply curve, the pre-tax supply curve and the post-tax supply curve. Now, because of a tax on the supplier, that means that less can be supplied to the market at each price level. If we impose a tax on a supplier, effectively their costs have gone up. And that's going to have an effect on price and quantity. Now, you often hear the phrase excise duties when you cover this topic. So I just want to cover this one for you. Excise duties are indirect taxes. And uh, they're levied in the UK on three main categories of goods alcohol, tobacco and fuel. Now, generally, an excise duty set by customs and excise is charged a flat or a specific rate, so pine, pence per pint or pence per litre of diesel, for example, or pounds per packet of cigarettes. Or the tobacco it has both a specific duty and also actually an additional VAT, which uh, many, many smokers um, don't realise. So what are the main indirect taxes in the UK. Let's go through them. Here they are listed alphabetically. I've taken one or two of the smaller ones out. I reckon if you know these, uh, if you know these nine, you're in great shape. These are the biggest indirect taxes in the UK, ranging from air passenger duty all the way through to VAT, which is the biggest single tax. And we're going to cover some of these in this session. VAT is charged on the purchase of many but not all goods and services, VAT, value added tax. And in the last fiscal year, 2019-2020, over uh, £130 billion came into the government's accounts from VAT. Although this is expected and will indeed fall in 2020 and probably 2021 because of the severity of, of the recession induced by the pandemic. Another example of an indirect tax is fuel duty, excise duty. When you fill up at the petrol station, you're basically putting money into the government's coffers. The current excise duty on a litre of ultra-low diesel is 58 pence per litre, which is probably around 50-60% of the retail price of a, of a, of a litre of, of, of fuel. Another good example, examiners love this one when they always ask questions on these things, is the so-called sugar levy or the sugar tax. Now, quite a few countries, including countries like Mexico, have brought in a sugar tax. In the UK, it's a tax on high sugar drinks, uh, and it brought in about three million pounds a week in 2019. So put that in context, everybody. VAT, 134 billion pounds. The sugar tax, 143 million pounds. They are different, different uh, scales of magnitude, aren't they? The sugar levy, is a tax on high sugar drinks. There's a standard rate of 18 pence per litre for drinks, you know, with sugar content between 5 and 8 grams. A higher rate, 24p per litre, for drinks with more sugar content. And that's clearly a very important topic. We'll come back to that in, in a future revision video. Tobacco duty, smokers, often seen as benefactors in the sense they pay a lot of tax to the government. £6 billion a year in tobacco duty. That is actually coming down... Maybe talk about that in a few minutes. The duty, the excise duty on cigarettes is 16.5% of the retail price plus £244 per thousand cigarettes or £320 per thousand cigarettes, whichever is the higher. <clears throat> so let's take the latter figure there. The duty on cigarettes is about 32p per cigarette, well over £6 per pack of 20 Air passenger duty was brought in, I think, in mid-1990s. 
And actually, initially, it was seen as a kind of just general tax raising measure, although now it's given an environmental tinge and slant, trying to cut carbon emissions from from flights and things. So it's a tax on flights from UK airports. There are two destination bans, Band A and Band B. Band A is where the distance from London uh, to a destination's capital city is between naught and 2,000 miles. And Band B is where the distance from London to the destination country's capital city is over 2,000 miles, so long-haul flights. And uh, you can see it's based on a certain rate. So, for example, if you ban B, higher rate, 540 quid added to the price of your ticket. Quite significant cost. Another tax worth knowing about, I think, is the landfill tax. So this was introduced again some time ago now. Uh, the landfill tax applies to all waste disposed of by way of landfill at a licensed site. Okay, picture it here. And the tax. So, for example, you might take a skip to to the landfill site and the tax is charged by weight and it's about 94 pounds a ton we'll come back to the landfill tax when we when we evaluate indirect taxes because one of the consequences is an increase in fly tipping as people try to avoid that tax so VAT uh, is the biggest single indirect tax in the UK the bar in fact three rates for VAT there's 20%, which is the standard rate, pretty much for most goods and services. There is the reduced rate, 5%. Uh, that applies to things like children's car seats, home energy, electricity bills. And the hospitality sector is now charged VAT at 5%, down from 20%. That's one of the, the initiations, in, interventions by Rishi Sunak to try and support the hospitality sector during the lockdown and the pandemic. There is also a zero rate, 0%. On goods and services, including food, most food you get from the supermarket isn't isn't given VAT. Children's clothes, uh, books and magazines, uh, I think independent school fees are in there as well. And from January 2021, of course, an important point: the government has scrapped VAT on women's sanitary products, the so-called the abolition of the so-called tampon tax. When we're inside the EU, I think the, I think the, the essence of it was that you couldn't cut that tax to less than five percent. The UK has now cut that tax to, to zero. So here's the data showing the uh, information, showing the revenue from VAT for the UK. Uh, and you can see, look, 130 odd billion pounds. I've put in there, I've shaded three years in orange. Those were years of recession. 2009, 2010, and of course the current year, and into 2021. And VAT revenues tend to fall when an economy drops into recession because people are spending less. Restaurants are closed, people aren't going on cruises and things. People are spending less on goods and services. So that causes a fall in revenue. You would expect the VAT revenue to fall quite sharply in 2020, 2021 because of the recession. And tobacco duty, uh, this is this includes things like cigar duty and things, there's one or two other bits and pieces, so not just from cigarettes. To, from tobacco generally, we're talking a shade under £9 billion per year of revenue. Now that figure has fallen in the last 10 years or so, partly the rise of vaping, partly the, the change in consumer preferences away from smoking, fewer people smoke, particularly younger people. So the long-term decline in tax revenues from tobacco is something the government on the from public health point of view is pleased about, but from a revenue point of view is, is an issue. My final slide in this introduction is about the sharing economy. Now, one of the big issues is where will the government get its revenue from in the years to come? Should we tax income? Should we tax wealth? Should we tax spending or a combination of all three? And one of the questions we're thinking about is whether VAT in particular will be extended in the years to come, uh, especially with the UK government now running a huge budget deficit and needing to find fresh sources of revenue. The five, well, the sort of key sharing economy sectors in the UK are things like short term accommodation, Airbnb, passenger tram transport such as Uber and Lyft and others, and also things like on demand household services and professional services. And the sharing economy is clearly very popular and becoming more popular over time. Oftentimes people doing these services individually, as rather than as part of a big business, 
And of course, as a business, you need to have, I think, £85,000 a year turnover before you're charged, liable to pay VAT. And many independent contractors don't, in the sharing economy, don't earn that kind of money uh, and therefore don't have to pay VAT. So one of the big issues is whether the, the UK government should extend VAT to platform businesses such as Airbnb and Uber. Some people think it could raise tens of billions of pounds. Others think it could damage the growth of the sector. Now, in the next video, as we revise indirect taxes, we're going to go through step by step, stage by stage, the key analysis diagrams to get you great marks and things on assignments for indirect taxes.